Hello, I'm musician Rail Am Roof. Notice I didn't say professional musician. The difference being a musician makes music. A professional musician gets paid to make music. I fall in the musician category. Anyway, what I'm going to show you today talk about this is my soprano saxophone in its case. And I'm going to show you how to uh, not install but how to put together this soprano saxophone to get ready to play music. For those of you who are who have never seen one or have seen one and were kind of like curious or you're thinking do I really want to do I mean this is for somebody that's never really had any hands-on experience with a soprano saxophone or saxophone in general or a musical instrument. I thought I'd put, put this video together and say hey this is what it's like to carry it around to have it. This is what you gotta do to put it together. So if you're thinking about it maybe hey maybe this will push a little bit toward that direction. And if you're thinking, maybe I want to do it, but uh, now that I see, uh. So hopefully this will, hopefully it'll push in a positive direction toward it. But if not, uh, if you go toward the direction of not doing it, maybe save you some money and maybe you'll do something else. So either way, I, I like to think it would help you either way. Okay, so this is the case. Let me tell you, this is, a, inside this is a soprano. When I started playing music, uh, or playing the saxophone. I started out with a tenor saxophone. And at the time I was living in Ohio, going to school and working part time. And I decided I wanted to pick up a musical instrument. I had done it in grade six. So had, we had the little flute phones in uh, early grade school, and I didn't really like it. Was, it was a mess. And I couldn't really sing, so it wasn't really, I never really did a whole lot in music uh, growing up or in grade school or junior high. It just wasn't my thing. But I, I kind of thought, I saw Dave Cause on uh, their city of Hall, Shotha. that's cool, that looks cool, I want to be able to do that. Uh, I never got to that level uh, of Dave Cause or Kenny G, but I haven't had time to enjoy it playing it. So I wanted to show you um, what I've got. But what I did first, when I went to the store and said, what what instrument do I want? Do I, and the, the two basic ones were alto and tenor. And basically, which one do I want? And I like the sound of both. I mean, I talked to the sales guy there at the store in Dayton, Ohio. They had a big, they had a big music store there. And I was basically like, I like this. I mean, I like um, the size and the shape of both of them. I like the way they both sound. Uh, I kind of tended the sound a little bit more toward the alto, but yet I kind of like the physical size of the tenor because I'm a, I'm a taller, I'm a taller person. I felt like the alto would be a little too small physically, so I kind of. Weighing the fact that I like the alto a little bit better, the way it's a little higher pitched music as compared to the tenor, but yet the tenor had physically, I thought I, I think it, I thought it would be easier to play on a because I am a taller and I have, and I do have big hands, so I thought it would be easier to pick up because, like I said, because one it looked better, and two my hand size. I'm, I was always afraid if I got some little instrument, I'd, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't like playing it, wouldn't do it for very long. So that year. I took my tax return, but which was like eight hundred dollars, seven hundred and fifty something, and I set off and bought uh, a tenor saxophone. And I uh, went to Carol Biggs, uh, who was at the one of the music studios here in Columbus, Indiana, nearby Columbus, Indiana, and I started taking lessons. And I took lessons on that for several years, but then it got to the point where I just got tired of carrying it. I mean, it was a big instrument. And the case was like, I'm like, all right, too. I'm, and I talked to her, and I talked to, went to the music store, I said, hey, what, how, just to, looking at Sopranos and what Kenny G did, he had the smaller one, I was like, that might be neat to have, you know, to transfer from the bigger one to the smaller one, because one that's smaller, less weight, it's easier to carry around. And I did, I liked the sound of it, I liked the way Kenny G played it, I liked this, that kind of sound. So, I ended up buying this one, and I would never go back after having played this, I would never go to the alto or, or the alto or the tenor or anything bigger than that, because I like the. Not only do I like the sound of it, but I like the the fact that I can carry. I can carry it around. This makes a whole world of difference. Trust me. Okay. So let me show you what we got when we open the case. This is what we've got when we open the case. Okay. We've got the body here. We've got the neck strap. We have, let me show you, the 
the gooseneck, what we call the gooseneck, it's got a pad inside. There's a screwdriver for working on it. There's the mouthpiece. It's got a little fuzzy thing on the inside to keep it dry too. Here's the reeds that you use. And this is a little thing of wax that yeah, sometimes you put it around so it'll fit in the fit in the top of the body of the soprano sax. And that's basically all there is to it. There, like I said, you got neck strap, body, reeds, mouthpiece, and gooseneck. So you got one, two, three, four, five. And of course, I like these little. Um, Reed holders. These are really nice. They're real cheap and they do a really good job. So let's start with that. Okay. First thing you want to do, keep in mind that this has been in there a while. It needs to be cleaned. But first thing you want to do is unscrew this and then pull out your. And it's in there pretty snug. Especially since it's been in there a while. Ugh. But what that does is soaks up the spit and the moisture so it doesn't screw up the pads, okay? So you got that. Next thing you want to do, take your goose deck. Now if you ask me, I'm not, I don't know why they put this in the two. I mean, I don't know why they couldn't just add this to the actual body when they make them. Um, however, keep in mind, this isn't the only kind of goose deck. They have them, some of them are curved. This is a straight, I prefer the straight one. Uh, but they, I, in fact, when I bought this one, it came with two. It came with a straight and a curved. It's just personal preference. I just personally like the straight one. Okay, now keep in mind the saxophone's old. And, uh, okay, it's working. Yeah. Okay, so what you got, what you want to do, line it up. So what do you think? Where's the, yeah, I'm trying to do this backwards here. Okay. So when you hit the thumb key, it, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it, what it does is it opens up the thing. So you got that. You want to tighten that down. Well, I used to, okay, I haven't done this for a while, so bear with me. Next, take your mouthpiece, pull out your little Cut anything there. Get out a reed. This is a Rico two and a half. Keeping in mind that the the Rico is a name brand and the two and a half is the strength. Noting that the bigger the number, generally the stronger or thicker they are. So a three would be thicker, a four would be thicker than that, and so on. Yeah, that's a little old, but for purposes. Okay, so what you do next, you unscrew. Oh, dear God. Keep in mind, you want to keep this moist, but not spitty. And like I said, that's a little off, but it's, as far as, it's kind of old, kind of, but for what I'm going to show you today, it's not a big deal. Now what you want is just a little bit of a fingernail right there of a gap you want between so you can see a little bit of the black. Plus you want to get the, the metal on the brass below that little thing. So bring it fingernail there, brass below the thing. So as long as you got that, you're good to go. Next, stick it on the thing. I like to I like to line this up with my thumb, personal preference. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm putting it on there pretty tight because you don't want it to come off. Next, take my neck strap. Some people can play without a neck strap. I prefer to play with it. Just personal preference. Makes the job of holding it a lot, a lot easier. Put the next step on the thing, adjust it to your size. A little bit. There you go. 
go. And you're ready to play. And of course, to put it back in the case, you do the exact opposite. So until next time, I'm Ralph Moose. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and may God bless you.